Something weird is happening to this town. Well, not weird. That ugly, really ugly, I think it's like a 60s building over there, is the Ministry of Justice. Um, presumably now it should be calling itself the Ministry of Social Justice because they are flying the, um, the multicoloured rainbow flag. Because uh, this week, or well, this coming weekend, is going to be the Pride Festival, which uh, I don't think I'm going to be covering, uh, to be honest. Not really my kind of event, just to let you know. And actually, the, I don't know what to call it, the rainbow flag, the gay flag, is that what it's called? The gay flag. It's flying on a lot of buildings. Not, not on Buckingham Palace, though. I mean, that shows that they're not really rolling with the times, huh? They should change the British flag to the gay flag, especially when uh, possibly Prince Andrew's there. Haha, <laughs> that was a joke. Something very weird is going on. Um, People are starting to say that the Grenfell survivors are conspiracy theorists, which is an interesting one, isn't it? I mean, when they say they're conspiracy theorists, they're saying that, in fact, well, they're saying that the Grenfell survivors are saying that there are many more people dead than they're ever going to admit. And uh, people are basically calling them conspiracy theorists for saying such a thing. And uh, it's getting quite obvious now there is actually a massive cover up with the Grenfell Tower in terms of like, who were the people that worked for the particular corporations and why were particular companies who sort of did the cladding and stuff sort of instantly dissolved and rebranded and moved about and stuff at the time. Uh, well, it's almost like they knew that something bad was going to happen and when it eventually happened, they didn't want to be part of it. There was even a guy who um, worked for one of the big companies who was also a government advisor, which isn't really that weird. Uh, it's only really when something like the Grenfell fire happens that these people suddenly come out of the woodwork, suddenly come out of their rabbit holes, and you suddenly realise that they were deeply ingrained in influential positions where possibly they shouldn't, seeing as they were representing profit-making companies. But then that is the way that Britain has always worked, you know, insiderism. It's, uh, what's the old expression? It's not who you know. No, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Generally the thing. I wanted to um, read you something from The Guardian, which uh, isn't really a newspaper that I commonly read necessarily, but I mean The Guardian sort of frames itself uh, under the idea of sort of social justice or whatever and all of that stuff. So you would think that The Guardian would actually be nice to the Grenfell survivors, no matter what they say. Um, but it's not really being that nice to them. In actual fact, it's not really being nice to anyone, as you will see when I read out the article. Okay, so it's talking about how people are calling Grenfell survivors conspiracy theorists. In a way, it's, it's trying to defend them at the same time as completely denigrating every, everything else. Okay, listen, listen to this. The idea of a conspiracy theory is a disparaging one, evoking images of wild-eyed outcasts rambling incoherently. I mean, is that what my blog does? I'm rambling incoherently. Maybe I am. Um, yeah, rambling incoherently while polite society avoids eye contact. NASA faked the moon landings, they say, or Elvis Presley is still alive and wandering brazenly around Graceland. JFK's murderer, uh, JFK's murder is unsolved. UFO, UFOs crashed in New Mexico, Bush did 9-11. Uh, those are conspiracy theories and they are for the most part as ridiculous as the title connotes. Um, but what they are not is in any way similar to widespread distrust from Grenfell residents. So in a way, <laughs> they're being nice uh, to the Grenfell survivors, but um, it's a conspiracy theory, is it, of rambling, incoherent outcasts that JFK's murder is unsolved and that, uh, well, not necessarily that Bush did 9-11, but 9-11, people who question 9-11 are out incoherent, rambling outcasts, wild-eyed. I mean, the, the wild-eyed conspiracy theorists are the ones who call me a shill every time I put up a video or 
you know, say that I'm dodgy or whatever. I would class those as wild-eyed conspiracy theorists. And one of the things I've always wanted to do actually with my channel, but I've never actually got up the courage to do it because of the attacks that would happen, is to do a you know, debunking flat earth video. I mean, it seems pretty obvious. Ever watched a flat earth video? Because I have, I've watched plenty of them because people send them to me um, to say, Sam, you, you pretend that you know the truth, except you don't know the real truth because the real tr truth is, is the earth is flat and it's been a lie all along and all that, all that stuff. Have you ever actually watched a flat earth video? Oh my God, it's so easy to see that they're completely wrong. It, it, it's insane. Because uh, I, oh, I, don't, I don't really class myself as a wild-eyed conspiracy theorist outcast. Are these wild eyes? What is wild eyes? I think it's mythology. It's stuff that people have seen in movies, you know. Uh, in a lot of ways, possibly, my video is a little bit like that. It's often in movies, the conspiracy guy is somebody like, somebody's got a laptop open, they're like, watch this video, listen to what this guy's saying. He's saying something, oh, you won't believe it, but it's true. Um, maybe my videos aren't like that. Self-reflection, I think, is important, possibly. I don't know. It's a weird one, that, though, isn't it? The, so, what, so the, the Guardian reckons that the JFK murder is solved? Is there anyone, actually any rational person on Earth who believes that the JFK murder is solved? I mean, I don't know. Do people read that? I mean, it, it's fair to say, isn't it, that sometimes when we read stuff in the newspapers, it's not actually how the mass population necessarily feels. They might tell us that, you know, people think that conspiracy theorists are wild-eyed, crazy outcasts. But actually, increasingly, I would say the people are starting to embrace conspiracy theory on a, on a very minimal level, as in government, corruption, illegal wars, uh, the banking, bankster industry, um, is all just becoming sort of part of the mainstream thought, isn't it? Isn't it? Either, either that or people are just in denial and think that the banks are benevolent in some way and collect all of our tax revenue so they can help to improve the planet uh, with robots. <laughs> and uh, robots actually is another part of uh, the memosphere today. Robots. I'm pretty sure that when you look into the far flung future, you try and predict how society is going to play out, it's pretty clear to see that at some point they're going to be wanting to run a lot of administrative tasks by computer. In actual fact, it was announced only about two months ago that they want to replace um, in the different government departments on Whitehall 200,000 jobs with basically computer systems that do exactly the same thing, of course, without um, you know, asking questions or being worried about the job they're doing. Like, if you're doing cuts generally to a hospital or whatever, people complain, and the person who's doing it starts to feel bad, and their conscience, conscience is sort of what um, hampers them in the job of actually doing it. Um, isn't that what the cremation of care thing is all about? How, in order to make like important decisions, you basically just need to uh, have um, a lack of care about the people you're doing it to. Um, that's certainly true for like most politicians quite naturally, I think. But certainly, uh, I think a lot of them have a conscience. A lot of them want to act upon their conscience, especially when voting on particular things, which is why they have a system called whipping. Right? The whips make sure that nobody has their own opinion, but they all toe the party line and they vote in the correct way. Because there's a big meme going on in the internet about uh, Theresa May calling her Theresa bot or whatever, May bot, sorry, May bot. Which is a really good meme, actually, because she is quite grey and quite robotic-like, uh, or at least she appears that way. Um, who knows if she actually is? I mean, it might all just be part of like, some kind of grand game theory that she's dreamt up along with her uh, uh, public relations advisors. Who knows? Maybe she wants to appear like a robot. But certainly, in terms of the people that she's now invited into her cabinet, uh, the DUP members, like these 10 members, I was reading today like all the things they had to agree with in order to get the money, uh, that uh, one billion or whatever, which is basically just when, when we do Brexit, you go along with it. When we do this or that, you go along with it. They basically have been forced into a position to just be yes men and yes women 
to go along with everything Theresa May says and not deviate from the party line whatsoever, otherwise they won't get the money. So in a lot of ways, it is like having like a chain of robots who say, yes, madam, yes, madam, whatever you say, madam. It's not really, should we really have a parliament which is made up of people that when they're asked to vote on something, they disconnect their consciousness and just essentially vote automatically. The people who we expect would be, you know, heartfelt political people who really understand the problems and understand the solutions or are they just turning into basically like a vending machine type situation where it's just robots nodding their head on command because uh well particularly this parliament i think that's basically what we have maybot and the maybot army um and i think we're going to have to put up with them for a while i mean uh, again I'm not, I'm not actually Sherlock Holmes, but I do have some deductive skill. And Jeremy Corbyn the other day, just after I nearly bumped him in the head with my, um, my video camera, um, he said that he wanted to push for another election. But uh, using a bit of deduction, I've noticed that down at Parliament Square, the BBC's temporary studio, which was set up for the original election, was dismantled. Um, if they, they really were pushing for another election very, very soon, the BBC would have stayed there exactly where they are. It takes about a week to put that thing up and a few days to take it down. It's completely gone now and I think that means no election for the foreseeable future and all hail the grand Maybot of the future.